Rogers here. Can he finish it off? The answer is going to be no. That's an ace. And that should be SKT winning the game. Hey, everyone. Jad here. In week six of the 2017 LCK Spring Split, KT Rolster faced SK Telecom T1 in a battle for first place in the league. Game three was one of the closest matches I've ever seen. And it hinged on so many different decisions, which could have swung the outcome. Those decisions in the final minutes of the game are what we're covering this week on The Breakdown. Having split the first two games, the KT Rolster and SKT series was at its breaking point. 49 minutes into game three, KT was sieging SKT's bottom inhibitor turret, hoping to destroy it since they had already cleared the top lane inhibitor. What followed was a flurry of events which pushed both teams to their absolute limits. Let's get into it. Looking at the team compositions, KT have three ranged physical damage dealers in Graves, Jace, and Ash. Because of this, they can take down SKT's base incredibly quickly when given the chance. SKT, on the other hand, sport four melee champions in Rumble, Rengar, Zed, and Tom Kench. With such a range discrepancy, SKT is put into situations where they're forced to fight KT in order to defend their base. Successful fights for SKT involve Huni landing an equalizer onto the ranged damage dealers of KT, while Faker Zed and Blank's Rengar fly in for the assassinations, all the while Bang's Jin lends aid from afar with Curtain Call. Successful fights for KT involve picking off SKT before the fight even begins with a Gragas explosive cast from Smeb or an Ash Arrow from Death. Alternatively, a successful fight for KT involves keeping their ranged champions safe while still allowing them to deal damage to SKT's initiators. As KT land the killing blow onto SKT's bottom turret, SKT make the decision to attempt to flank. But based on the position of KT's minion wave in the top lane, SKT doesn't have long to make it work. Blank and Huni approach from the side as KT try to retreat. And this fight plays out about as well as SKT could hope. Huni lands a picture-perfect equalizer that touches all of KT's main threats, Bang opens up with Curtain Call, Faker and Blank fly in to follow, and as if that wasn't enough, Wolf and Huni utilize Abyssal Voyage to pick off Pawn and save Faker. This is where SKT's decision-making kicks into high gear. KT's super minions destroy an SKT Nexus turret at the tail end of the fight, and SKT know they need to maximize the value of KT's death timers while still defending their base. It's a complex problem. SKT have to quickly decide how to best defend their base from a minion wave of that size, while also deciding how to prioritize objectives and also who to send to those objectives. Plus, any hesitation is costly. Initially, Faker begins channeling his recall, but then changes his mind as SKT's plan begins to take shape. SKT opt to recall Wolf's Tom Kench and Huni's Rumble while sending their three best turret killers towards KT's mid lane inhibitor turret. Then, since Scores Graves shows up to clear the minion wave in the mid lane, Huni opts to teleport onto the sole surviving minion which keeps the mid lane turret vulnerable and pushes score completely back. All of these decisions have consequences. While Huni helped SKT open up KT's mid lane, it was at the cost of SKT's second Nexus turret, as Wolf can't stave off so many minions by himself. He did manage to keep KT's minions from destroying the Nexus though, which bought the rest of SKT just enough time to push. Right after SKT finished the KT inhibitor, they need to decide, do they reset and get their minion waves under control, or do they try to rush Baron before KT respawns? Again, Faker briefly channels his recall before heading with his team towards Baron. It's going to be close. Here, Faker actually stops for blue buff, which slows down his ability to reach Baron, but it has the potential to come in handy later on. KT make the near instant decision to try and stop SKT from getting Baron but they have to check blindly. Score can assume the Baron has been started, otherwise SKT would have people showing on the map clearing the minion wave on top side. So Score smartly wards over the wall first, but then burns his quick draw instead of utilizing the blast cone to hop over the wall. Then Death's Hawkshot and Enchanted Crystal Arrow enter the pit, and SKT try and lay down an equalizer to stop Score from further harassing them. SKT do push Score out of the pit and finish Baron, but end up barely getting caught by KT as they retreat. Blank falls to score, and Huni narrowly prevents his GA from procking with a flash away. Now with a 5v4 and a defenseless Nexus, KT make the call to move to top lane and look to end the game. 
And since SKT sacrificed their Nexus turret minutes earlier, they have almost no defensive aid from KT's push. This fight throws KT into yet another complex decision. Do they fight SKT first and attempt to win the fight before killing the Nexus? Or do they rush the exposed Nexus and hope that SKT can't kill them in time? But what if KT would have tried something completely different? By rushing towards SKT's base, they are opting to not get Elder Dragon. If KT had instead opted to run for Elder Dragon after their kill onto Blank, they could have secured it and then attempted an Elder Dragon empowered 5v5 push some minutes later. What matters though, is the impact and execution of the decision they do make. KT go for the 5v4 fight. Smeb attempts a pick onto Faker with Body Slam Flash, but Faker dodges the explosive cask with Death Mark. Bang opens up a curtain call, but fails to account for Score, who dashes into Bang and nearly ends his life. Bang flashes for safety, and Huni stalls with Zonia's Hourglass. At this point, KT look to be in position to hit the Nexus and potentially win. However, they commit to continuing the fight. Huni's Guardian Angel procs, and immediately after reviving, he's devoured by Wolf's Tom Kench. This buys just enough time for Equalizer to come off of cooldown. As Huni lays it down, the fight miraculously turns around in SKT's favor. Additionally, since Faker is wearing that blue buff, he has the energy necessary to carry on fighting, proccing multiple Guardian Angels and completing the ace on the KT Rolster. Now, with giant death timers on all of KT, minions right outside of KT's base, and a down mid lane inhibitor, SKT make one of their simplest decisions of the game, run it down mid for the victory. And looking back, SKT and KT pushed each other to the max. This four minute sequence was filled with incredibly complex decisions that required instant responses and great execution. While KT's decision to go for the 5v4 fight didn't pan out, there were just so many variables to account for. Had Faker not had blue buff? Had KT opted to take Elder Dragon instead of push for the end? Or had SKT's execution been any different in the final fight? KT probably ends up winning. But at the end of the day, SK Telecom T1 prevailed as usual. And with the win, SKT moved into sole position of first place in the 2017 LCK Spring Split.